Well, please turn with me in your Bibles this evening to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 19. Matthew 6, 19, the words of Christ, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. My friends, we're looking this evening at these wonderful, amazing words of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount. And my title is, Where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? And it's really all about, isn't it, material things. And it's the words that are so re relevant for today, spoken 2,000 years ago by Christ, but spoken, speaks just as clearly, just as relevantly for us in our day and generation. Where is your treasure? Is it in earthly things? Is it in earthly possessions? Is it in earthly accumulations? Or is it in heaven? Is it in those things that are above? Human nature hasn't changed. Human nature is still very much the same as it ever was. Finding a lot of happiness, finding a lot of contentment in having things, in surrounding ourselves with things, in accumulating worldly things, worldly possessions, and to the neglect of spiritual things. We live in a time, isn't it, where uh, the accumulations of things, everyone seems to be seeking after more. Uh, everyone is hooked, or most of us are hooked on getting more, on filling our homes with more, and filling our lives with more. The young, well, they must have the latest gadgets. The housewife, well, she must have that fully fitted uh, kitchen with all its mock-ons. Her infants, well, they must have many toys surrounding them. One or two is not sufficient. They must have many, and many live for these things. Many live for possession. Many people feel Oh, my life is incomplete. If I don't have things in my life, well, I'm a poor person. I'm, I'm not doing as well as other people. My life is empty without material things. And they feel uh, that they haven't quite made it in life. And they feel they haven't, uh, are being deprived of happiness because they don't have those material possessions. They look with envy, over the garden fence, and they see their neighbor, and the neighbor has it all, and the neighbor has all those mock cons, and the neighbor has everything, and they say to themselves, oh, they must be happy. They've got everything. They don't really know what's going on inside the house, but it seems to be because they are surrounded with everything that money could buy. Well, they say to themselves, I want to be like them. I wish I was like that. That's what I'm going to aim for in life. And so many strive uh, for earthly things. And they uh, strive to the point of even doing harm to themselves. They, maybe, many of them, they work extra hours or they take on a second job and they make sacrifice after sacrifice in order to get more things uh, to themselves. And they, as I said, many people affect their health uh, in the process. And that thought in their mind is, well, to have more equals happiness. To have more uh, equals peace and comfort uh, in, uh, this, uh, in this life. To have ease. And so people generally want uh, material things. This is what they desire. People desire material things. People covet material things. Well, the manufacturing companies know that because they know that you want, you know, about supply and demand, because there is a demand from the consumer, from you and me, so that they come in uh, to supply those things, and because it's a profit, isn't it? They can see a profit in pro providing those things. And so they're quite willing to spend tons and tons of money on advertising, because they know 
that, that they're not, it's not an advertising that is into thin air. They know that there is something in you and I which, to which these products are, are appealing. And so they know that this money is not going to be wasted. They know that advertising works. They know that there is a desire even in the human heart for the, their products. And so they come across and present them as these are the things you must have. These are the things that will make your life fulfilling. You don't have this latest gadget or a device, or something is going to be missing uh, in your life. And they play on that desire within us. So there is, friends, a hankering after material possessions. Now we have to say there's nothing wrong in having things. We have nothing sinful in having things. Christ is not teaching that here when he says, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth. There is, we need certain things. There's nothing wrong in even having a fully fitted kitchen. That's perfectly uh, normal. Uh, it's common these days. There's nothing wrong in making our lives easier or more comfortable. Uh, the, problem, the problem comes when we set our heart on those things. When we set our heart on material things and it becomes the goal of our life and the primary purpose of our life is really to accumulate more and more of these things. This is what the word here says, laying up, accumulating, storing, heaping up things for ourselves. And in the process of doing these things, we are so engaged in seeking these earthly things that we exclude God from our lives. And we don't have time for God. And we don't have a thought for God. And I have no time to, to listen to God because I've got to work those extra hours. And I've got to first get all those things. And that will give me, that will give me happiness. We think that those things are going to give us happiness and, and not the Lord. And so we don't realize that actually we are poor spiritually. We are, we are poor. We, are have, we don't have a God in our life. And we don't think about those things because we are so taken up with uh, seeking after material things. It doesn't concern us that I don't have God's favor. It doesn't concern me that I don't have God's blessing on my life. It doesn't trouble me. It troubles me that I don't have the material things. But it doesn't trouble my conscience that I'm under God's judgment, that I'm on my way to hell, that I'm, my sins are unforgiven. These things uh, don't trouble me. There's no striving within me. There's no seeking after the Lord. There's no striving to find out how can I be saved. We have plans for a better life uh, in this world. And that's how the extent of our plans stops there, how to make it in this world. But we have no plan how to get to heaven. How can I secure a place in heaven? How can I obtain the favor of God? We don't have uh, any plan for that. Uh, we are so absorbed in furthering our lot here. Perhaps even we laugh when we mention about, people mention to you about heaven and they talk to you about hell, perhaps you, people even laugh at this. Yesterday, I offered a tract, uh, to, a gospel tract to a man on the street and uh, he said, what is it? And I said, it's, it's a, a leaflet to tell you how to get to heaven. And he refused it and he went off sniggering as he went. And that's what people do, isn't it? Some people anyway, and you tell them, the importance of these things, they snigger, they laugh at these things. Well, friends, these verses here are a very small part of Christ's a sermon. And it's a famous sermon, as I'm sure you've heard it and hopefully read it before, the Sermon on the Mount, preached on a mountain, specifically to the disciples, but all are on that mountain, thousands are listening in, are hearing the words of Christ, for no man has spake like him. And in these few sentences, verses 19 to 21, Christ is urging his listeners not to be so much worldly focused, not to be entirely focused on the things of time, not to be materially minded, but to be heavenly minded, to be spiritually minded 
a people. He urges them to lay up treasures in heaven. He's arguing with them and he's going to show to them why they should lay up treasures in heaven and why they should not lay up treasures in, on the earth. And he's reasoning with them. He's, he's attempting to persuade them uh, to leave, uh, uh, to uh, prioritize spiritual things above uh, earthly things. And he's going, he tells them in these verses that the things of the earth, earthly treasures, well, they are of a temporary nature. They just last for a short time. Whereas in contrast, the heavenly treasures are permanent and they're long-lasting and they are forever. And then he's going to tell them about the insecurity of earthly treasures. He says, don't put your trust in it. It can be taken away from you at any time. And in contrast, that with heavenly treasures, they are safe. And once you have them, they are yours. And they are yours forever. And no one can take them from you. And God himself won't take them back from you. Once he gives them to you, he will not take them back again. So let's think, friends, about these two kinds of treasures just for a while. Why should I not be fixated on earthly things? Well, Christ says here, because we are sure to lose them at one time or another, in some way or another, sooner or later, we will lose those earthly things. Riches take wings and they fly away. Verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Well, the riches in the East at that time, yes, it was gold and silver, but there also were other things, land, uh, jewelry and all gems, that was part of their treasures, but also fine clothing, expensive clothing, uh, beautiful clothing. Uh, this was also people considered, if they had uh, fine clothing, that was considered a part of their wealth and their riches. And they would hand these clothings down to, as part of their uh, inheritance to their children and so on. And it was considered a thing, well, if I have even uh, rich uh, embroidered clothing in my lot, in my possession, well, that will put me in good stead for the future. So it was kind of uh, deposits, kind of a, a trust that people had to secure them for a good uh, future. And the fashions in those days, well, they didn't change as they do today. And so things retained their value. Clothes retained their value. So they had, uh, but the, the trouble was, they had no way of protecting those clothes. They had no way of protecting them from the moths. And clothing there was liable uh, to be moth-eaten. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt. It was easy for the moths to get to their clothes. They had no such things as mothballs or in their cup to put in their cupboards, nor any uh, moth repellent oils uh, 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 which they could use. So it was quite easy for the moths to get at the clothes and to eat away uh, at it. And before long, those beautiful, expensive garments that they had were full of holes and they were ruined. They were unfit to wear, had to be thrown away at the end of the day. And they've lost that precious, valuable item that they'd uh, depended on. And they thought, well, this will put, garment will put me in good stead for the future. But it disappears right in front of their very eyes. Where moth and rust doth corrupt. The word here, rust, literally means, friends, to eat away or to eat into something. It's not specifically speaking of silver and gold uh, corroding, uh, uh, although it does include that, but it speaks of all material things. All material things are prone to corruption. Everything in this world is prone to corruption, to be ruined and eventually to be destroyed. All material things are prone to change. Nothing retains its original state. It's ever decaying. It's ever be, uh, becoming more corrupt. It's rusting. The world that we live in, friends, is like that. 
How did it become like that? It wasn't always like that. At the very beginning, when God created the world, everything was good. There was nothing of corruption in it. But when Adam disobeyed the Lord, when he, sin came into the world, along with sin came the corruption. It came the curse. Not only was Adam and Eve corrupted in themselves, not only did they begin to die, but the whole world, the whole creation came under God's curse to remind us of our sin. And we could say, well, uh, the, the world in a sense begins to die as well because it's under God's judgment. And so you see, corruption has affected every part of the world that we live in. Beautiful as it still is, yet it is corrupt. The animals is, are affected. The weather is affected. The environment is affected. We live, friends, in a fallen world that has a, for, a world that is in such a state because of man's sin. Nothing lasts forever here. Your bread, good today, tomorrow, it's moldy. Cars, they're good, they last a bit longer nowadays. Uh, but they very quickly also will go rusty eventually and need to be scrapped. Houses, well, they need to be maintained continually. Roofs leak, the tiles fall off. Uh, carpets wear thin. Gardeners, well, you, need, you don't need to be told this. If you're a gardener, you're an amateur gardener, you know you have a constant fight with the weeds and the slugs and the snails and the pests. It's all part of this fallen world that we live in, this polluted world. The air that we live in is polluted. Friends, nothing lasts forever. Those things that we set our hearts on, they're going to, in some way or other, uh, deteriorate, and they lose their original appeal, and they lose their original attractiveness, and they're not the same as they're always, uh, that they were at the, at the beginning. So why set our hearts upon them? This is what the Lord is saying. Don't set your hearts upon these things. Why live for the accumulation of them if they're only going to be moth-eaten and, and rust? But then Christ uses another argument and, uh, to persuade them. And he says, where thieves, uh, do not, where thieves break through and steal. Your goods, your possessions are liable to be taken from you unexpectedly. A thief may break through and steal them. Uh, break through in the houses in the east at that time, they were made uh, often of clay. So it's very easy for thieves to break through uh, a house and to steal your prized possessions. And friends, it's a lesson for us uh, uh, here as well in our day. We're not only thinking about thieves and robbers who actually enter into houses, and steal our things. But there are all kinds of thieves in this world. All kinds of thieves are out to steal you of different, the things that you have. There are, there are thieves that are out there to rob you of your enjoyment, of your happiness. You, you, you worked hard, you've got a lot of money maybe to yourself, but then a sudden rise in inflation unexpectedly, and what happens, you begin to see your bank account uh, drop. You invested in the stock market. It's been going well for some time, but then suddenly it, the stock market crashes and you lose again a lot of money. Or perhaps uh, you're, you've got your plans, you've made your plans for the coming year or two years or three years, I don't know, and you've decided this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be in such and such a place and achieve such and such a goal, but then illness strikes to rob you of that uh, plan that you have and to rob you of healthy days and suddenly you find, I can't do what I wanted to do and I have to take another route and I have to go down a different path to my first plan. You've been robbed of your original plan. Maybe you've got that dream job and you've been in that dream job for a while, but then the news filters down from the top. The company is not doing well. Redundancies are on the horizon. Your position is under threat. 
You're, and then you're selected, and suddenly your dream do- job is taken from you. Unexpectedly, these things happen. I read of a, a runner, long distance, a British runner, and she had aspirations uh, to run for Team GB in 2016 Olympics. And she apparently was a very good steeplechase runner and one of the, ranked one of the, the best in, in the country. And so uh, the, the potential was there and everything was in place and she seemed to be uh, on her way to achieving uh, her, her dream of being in the, in the Olympics. But then, unbeknown to herself, slowly a debilitating disease began, uh, stru- uh, struck her. And she slowly, she began to realize, I'm getting tired. I'm feeling fatigued more. What's wrong with me? And it, uh, it, gradually she re- realized that, uh, that she was uh, suffering from some kind of illness. And she could barely, it ended up with her barely being able to function and uh, even uh, to do what she wanted to do. And she said, these are her own words, I lost sight of all my dreams taken away, stolen from her, her dreams, unexpectedly. Life's like that, friends. Put all our hopes in this this world, put all our eggs in the basket of this world, and that's what happens. The world, uh, the things that we trust in here, or they're liable to perish or be taken away from us. But listen to Christ's counsel. He's almost like a financial counselor. You know, you, you, you want to go to a financial counselor, tell me what shall I do with my money? Well, here the Lord is, you go to the Lord, He is our spiritual counselor, consultant, telling us what to do and where to invest ourselves. Well, what was best for us? Listen to His counsel. Don't invest, He says, in this world. Verse 20, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Don't invest in this world. Invest in the world that is to come. Let that be your chief concern, to invest in eternity, to invest and prepare for eternity. I won't be in this world forever. My time here is limited. My stay here is only a temporary one. My body, I know, is, is already is prone to corrupt. I know it. I feel it. I know, in a sense, I'm dying as well. Don't seek for earthly things. I can't take these things with me. Naked, I came into this world. Naked, I must leave this world. I cannot carry possessions with me. I cannot carry my certificates with me. I cannot carry any fame with me if I do get fame. I have to leave all those behind. Naked, I go, as it were, into glory into, or into heaven, into the next life. Oh, friends, the Lord's saying here, lay up treasures upon, uh, in heaven, not upon the earth. Don't seek for security in your earthly things. Find your safety in Jesus Christ. Find your safety in salvation. Have these possessions, salvation. Have in your possession the forgiveness of all your sins. Have in your possession acceptance with God. Have uh, To have a place in God's heart. Oh, that's a great thing to have. To be known by God, to be able to call God your Father and your friend, to have Christ as your Savior, to have a place in heaven, to know that your name is written in heaven. Well, these are things, these are spiritual possessions that you must have. These are the ones that are worth having. These are the heavenly treasures that our Christ is, has in mind. Oh, friends, the joy, the joys of heaven are incomparable to anything that we find uh, in this world. And what a happiness is reserved for people who get to heaven. A happiness that is, is so wonderful. And a world that is so very wonderful. A world, a new world, what will it be like? When the Lord speaks about it being a, a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. It will be a place of discovery a place for us uh, to uh, learn uh, so much 
uh, about a place that is without these corrupting influences that we have in this life. And that future place in heaven is a place where there are friendships to be made without those corrupting things that affect friendships in this life. The envies, the jealousies, the hatred, the backsliding. And we talk about friends. We know from experience this is what happens with friends here. But there's nothing like that there. Pure friendships, lovely friendships, pure love, pure trust, nothing to disturb the rest of those who obtain a place, access to Christ, access to his love, unfailing access to him, and so much more that we cannot have, do not have time to mention, and so many other things which are not mentioned to us, but are reserved for those who, have, uh, who enter into heaven. So heaven, friends, is a place where there is no corruption, no moth, no rust, rust, no thief, where you are safe, your joys are safe, you cannot lose them, your happiness is safe, permanent, your place there, your status is safe, you'll never be ejected uh, from heaven once you are truly there. Well, how? How can I invest in heaven? Well, the answer is very simple. You turn to Christ now. You turn away from putting your heart into those, in those earthly things and you trust rather in the Saviour. You come to Him and you, you cry to Him for mercy. You go and you, you gaze upon that cross on which He died and you see Him dying there to take away your sins and you say, Lord, I believe. I believe you died on my, in my place. I believe you died carrying the punishment for my sins. I trust in you. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me. Give me a new heart. Give me a new life. From now on, I'm going to live for you. I turn my back on this world which is passing away. And I'm going to live for you and for your glory to serve you. But in this way, friends, you're investing in the world that is to come. You are putting down, as it were, your deposit and saying, I, I trust in Christ. And when you do that, well, he blesses you with salvation. He gives you that assurance that you are his. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where you set your heart, friends, and it says a lot about you. How can you tell where, I, where, I, where you really stand? How can you tell? Well, here's the, a test. Am I, have I set my affections on the things of the world or on the things of Christ and of heaven? How can I tell? Well, here, verse 21, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If you are chasing after material things, if you find that the thrust of your life is only for the acclaim of this world and the things that are in this world, then, friends, it's, it's showing to you and to others that your treasure is in this world because that's where your heart is. But if you are seeking for heavenly things, then that will be evident also. And you'll be known as a person who is concerned about faith and repentance and pleasing God and living for Him and living for His glory. These are the things that concern you above earthly things. And that will be evident uh, and, uh, uh, to you and to others uh, also. So friends, hear Christ's counsel. Hear what He advises you and I to do. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Treasures there which a, a man cannot take away, moth cannot take away, rust cannot corrupt, and with uh, people cannot break through nor steal. Oh, may the Lord help us to come to him and trust in him for these things. Let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you again for enlightening us through the words of our Saviour. And, oh, help us and awaken us 
to our spiritual needs and grant that we may deposit our souls in his hands. Grant that we may invest in those things that are above and in heaven above and that we may come even this evening if we haven't done so to trust in Christ with all our hearts and souls in repentance and faith. Bless us, we pray, we ask in our Saviour's name. Amen. Amen. We sing together our final hymn number 388, Thou God of Glorious Majesty, 388.